and welcome to another episode of Buy It or Leave It, the show where two people who can't possibly afford all these games <laughs> act like they can afford all these games. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, That's everybody. Uh, I am Mike, um, a.k.a. Pezman Mike. And I am Roger, a.k.a. Rogue Leader 76. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about all the awesome video games coming out next week and our opinion on whether you should buy it or whether you should leave it leave it or buy it i don't know we should come up with a funny jingle for that shouldn't we that's good (laughs) we should do the entire show should be nothing but jingles that's right that's right (laughs) awesome so uh the games that we are going to be talking about are some of the uh, major retail games coming out for the week of uh november 11th through the 17th so what do you say we jump right into it yeah and so listeners each of us has we said 80 dollars, right is that right yep. mike 80 dollars a week we are given and we carried over each of us carried over three dollars from our last yeah. episode so <laughs> so we can cover the taxes that's right <laughs> not even the taxes we can cover half the taxes at least in my area <laughs> awesome <laughs> All right, so our first game uh, that we're going to talk about that's coming out is Hitman 2. Make the world your weapon. Become Agent 47 and dismantle the elusive Shadow Client's militia. Think deadly as you travel the globe to take down your targets in six new sandbox environments. Improvise each assassination and explore the franchise's most advanced installment to date. Have you ever played a game in the Hitman franchise? Uh, I think I played one of the early games, uh, and and then I got lost because this also confuses me and I'm not a, okay. So full disclaimer, I'm not a huge Hitman fan. I just haven't played a whole lot of them. How is this number two when we've (laughs) we've had like Hitman, lots of Hitmans, right? I mean, this is weird Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of Hitmen out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they, so they rebooted it, and I okay. think so. After Square Enix purchased the Hitman uh, rights from, I don't know, was it Ubisoft that used to have it? I don't know. Uh, um, sure. but so yeah, so they kind of rebooted the whole thing. Okay, kind of so like a why. Tomb Raider thing. Exactly. Nice. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Just like Tomb Raider. Um. So. I, I too I've so I haven't played a whole lot of the Hitman games so I played Hitman Blood Money and that was a fun experience there was one where it was a uh, an opera ho- opera house and I had to take out two um I had to take on an actor and and somebody in the audience oh, so wow. I uh, I ended up sneaking sneaking uh, in uh, behind the scenes and I uh, snuck into the dressing room and I replaced the prop gun with a real gun oh. Wow, and that then, sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like like you can do that. That's so open. That's crazy. Yeah, the amount the amount of things uh the options that you have available to you is insane. The problem is I'm not very creative and I always get caught by somebody who's just like looking at me weird. I'm just yeah. like I'm just you know, I'm just walking around and they're like, "Hey, that guy's got a barcode in the back of his head. I'm going to go alert someone." And I'm like, "What the heck? Like I didn't even do anything." <laughs> yeah. So then so then, so then I just go guns blazing. That's what it always uh, ends up being. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's actually how I play Red Dead. Yeah. <laughs> when all else fails, right? That's what yeah, that's right. Uh so what are you thinking? Are you going to buy this or leave it? Uh, you know, I've heard good things about this game. Uh, I know that a lot of people that are into the Hitman series say this is a really, really good game. But I, there's so many games this week. I'm gonna have to say leave it. Okay, I, I'm gonna say leave it as well. Um, only because I, I still, I still want to play the first one. Otherwise, I'll be lost. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. No, nah, I, I, I think I, I think I'm gonna leave it because you know I, I try to get into the Hitman games, but they're just they're it's it's such a strong learning curve that it it can be it could be daunting at times. Yeah, yeah, agreed. So. All right, so our next game, uh, Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Meet Spyro, the adorable and mischievous little dragon, on a gigantic adventure. Take on an astonishing and completely 3D platform adventure game unlike any other. Take a wonderful journey as you glide, fly, roll, and frolic through fantasy worlds. 
So I was a, uh, back in the day, I was a Nintendo 64 person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a PlayStation, but I was, it was at that time for me where I was like going past like the, the child friendly games and getting into the ultra hardcore, ultra violent, you know, yeah. the Shadow Man and Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver and just like Resident Evil, Twisted Metal, things like that. So I never got into the Spyro games. Yeah. Yeah, neither did I. I think I think I'm in the same boat as you. Like I I started getting into like Resident Evil and uh yeah, those those I don't want to say adult games, but more less cartoony, more more mm-hmm. uh action horror kind of stuff. So I I also never really got into these games and I know Christian's going to really <laughs> He's gonna really hate this when I say this, but I, I have no interest in playing this game. <laughs> you know, I I had the same thing. I had the same feeling about the Crash Bandicoot collection because I never played those games either. Yeah. Uh, but I I did pick up the Crash Bandicoot select uh, collection for the Switch, and man, those games are real challenging. Yeah, I I and I know that that's the case, and I know that that's why Christian really likes those games. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just I don't know. I just there's so many other games that are coming out that are new and not remastered things, and I just, yeah. I, I just can't, I, I can't justify buying a buying this game. I just can't. Yeah, I just won't play it. So I go, well, it. at least you're being honest to yourself. I'd probably end up picking it up and just let it sit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I normally do, but I've really, I mean, with all the games that are coming out the, for through the rest of the year, I'm. I'm going to have to say leave it just because, yeah, because of all the games that are coming out. Right. I'm going to leave it too, uh, only because I'm sure it'll come out for the Switch. And I know that's really odd for me to say, but if I'm going to have Crash Bandicoot on the Switch, yes. I got to have uh, Spyro as well. <laughs> yes, agreed. It's weird. Yeah. No, I I, I can see that though. Mm-hmm. Uh, our next game is The Golf Club 2019. Uh, The Golf Club 2019, featuring the PGA Tour, is the sequel to the highly rated The Golf Club 2 and comes with a whole host of new and improved content and features across all aspects of the game. From a restructured career mode experience, sponsors who challenge you and set you goals for a chance to earn rewards from licensed brand new armor. An improved character editor, new and improved online and solo societies, new game modes such as skins and alt shot, as well as much, much more. Are you a video game golf or real life golf fan? Um, uh, Not real life. (laughs) I cannot (laughs) golf at all. But a video game golf fan I am. Uh, This game, is this coming out on the PS4 and Xbox? Yeah, PS4, Xbox One, PC. Okay, and it's forty. How much is this one? Uh, the golf club is fifty. Fifty. Okay. So, I am a golf fan. I bought everybody's golf. Is that what that game is? Yeah, I yeah. think so. And I have not played much of it, and that's really sad because I heard good things about that one. And I also bought Golf Story, which I really love, and I played quite a bit of that one. I have to beat that one. I feel like I have to play those games first before I can jump into something new for a golf game. So, and I also have Mario Golf as well. I'm going to have to leave this. So, for this one, so I played the first two golf club games. Okay, I never even heard of golf club, so it's interesting. And and here's and here's why I really enjoy the golf club. So, first of all, I am not a real life golf person. Uh, to me having golf on TV on a Sunday afternoon <laughs> is prime nap material. Yes, agreed. Like I do not get some of my best naps have been during watch having golf on TV. <laughs> that or bowling. <laughs> that or bowling. Yes. <laughs> um but with the golf club, so I I really love the golf club golf club games and here's why. They basically see okay here's what ea does with their golf golf games let's let's not just try to copy them so if you're going to play online you're playing on a level playing field there's like you can't like go to career mode earn money buy a pair of socks that increase your you know 
uh, your your swing or buy a hat that increases your you know your your power or anything like that. Everybody's on the same exact playing field. The only mm. thing you can customize is the character's look. Oh. So, so it's all skill. So nice. the if you're good at the game, you're good at the you're good because you're good, not because you leveled up your character. You yeah. know. Yeah. To, to that point. And then here's another really weird thing that I never understood about a lot of golf games. Um, when I play golf online, so Kurt from, from our show, he loves golf games too. And actually Brian got into it too, and he enjoys it as well. But the online games, online golf games, for some reason, a lot of them are all real time. And when I say real time is that they're not turn-based. So oh. if I'm about to, I'm about to, you know, I, you know, I, I tee off and then I'm about to chip if I'm playing online. And then all of a sudden I'll see a half invisible ball roll past my guy <laughs> yeah. because somebody else is taking their turn. And yeah. I'm like, no, that's not what I want. I want to be able to see their shot just, yeah. you know, to see how well they're doing because I don't yeah. know, to me, that interests me. Um, there was a game, one of the first online golf console games was Lynx for the original Xbox Lynx 2004, I think it was called. And um, Kurt and I played that game all the time, all the time. Hmm. So the golf club has the, that turn based um, shot. So you can, you can watch your, uh, watch your friends um, as, as they play, as they play live. So that's why I'm, that's why I really enjoy it. So yeah, I'm actually, I'm going to go opposite. I'm going to say buy it. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to say buy golf club. See, so do you think, do you think, um, and I'm I'm not trying to say sway your your answer, but do you think there's enough change in this new one that is that warrants you to buy this? I'm just curious. Well, so here's here's what is uh, is going on. So the difference between Golf Club Two and 2019. First thing is they got they took the PGA license away from EA. Oh, which is interesting. A, yeah, that's a that's a big that's a big step. Um, and I, I must say this, I love the first golf club. Golf club two was a bit of a disappointment for me. Mm. So I'm hoping this one is going to be better, but I still think it's worth it. If you're, if you're a golf, um, if you're, if you're a golf a video game golf fan, I gotta, you know what I gotta do is I gotta send you this, this gift that I, that I saved is, uh, I, I, I chipped, I tried to do a chip shot, but there yeah. was a, there was a wolf standing in front of me. What? Yeah. <laughs> What? And the and the golf ball donked the wolf in the head, <laughs> and the wolf and it and it killed the wolf. Like the, they actually programmed into the game. The wolf had this dramatic flop. It was I mean it would make it would make LeBron James proud. It just it just went like and and just boom just hit the ground. And the very next shot, the wolf is laying dead in front of me as I'm trying to take my shot. Oh my gosh! Wait, so what? What what kind of golf what kind of golf courses have wolves just walking around them? <laughs> Apparently, guess, the best kind of golf courses I because I got a good laugh out of it. I guess I was just thinking like I can understand alligators. I've seen that before where people are golfing and an alligator is like yeah. in the in the water uh, traps right. or whatever. But uh, wolves, I don't I don't know. It seems weird. Okay. Yeah well, it 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 the the game has an extremely robust. Um, create a course and they have a very dedicated um, fan community that makes some amazing uh, golf courses like even you know when they didn't have the the license to all these courses people would just go in and just meticulously create these real golf courses Uh, i see i see um but like even there's people like there's people who have made miniature golf courses like that's how wow yeah so it's it's a pretty it's a pretty cool game so there's there's never a uh uh a need for content, I guess you could say. I see. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so that leaves you with thirty dollars, doesn't it? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, that does. <laughs> That's gonna be. Can I take a loan out for next week? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're gonna need it, aren't you? Yeah. All right. So our next game, uh, SNK 40th Anniversary Collection. 2018 marks the 40th anniversary of legendary studio SNK. To celebrate this extraordinary milestone, a variety of classic arcade games from SNK's Golden Age are coming back together in one anthology on the Nintendo Switch. SNK 40th Anniversary Collection is packed full of retro games and a treasure trove of features. So this is $40. 
This one is $40. And it comes with 14 games to begin with, plus, plus on December 11th, there's another 11 games that you can get for free. Uh, I'm buying this game. This game is, yeah, definitely something I'm going to buy. Uh, I had the fortunate uh, circumstance, I guess, if you will, that I was able to review this game. And you can hear our review on our episode on Sunday, which aired last Sunday, uh, which is weird because we're recording this before that episode. But <laughs> <laughs> but this game uh, is, I will say that if you are a fan of arcade-style games, and if you are a fan of uh, like gaming history, and you want good value for your, you know, your forty dollars. This is a definitive grouping of retro games that will please anybody. I mean, there's platformers, there's action RPGs, there's uh, shooters, there's side scrollers. It's it's a great game. Bye 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 bye. <laughs> <laughs> what are you a member of NSYNC now? Yeah, I am. <laughs> bye 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 bye. Uh, yeah, no, I I. This is a, uh, yeah, this, it, it's great because not only do they include, include the console version of the games, they also include the arcade version of the games. And mm. there is a difference between the console version and the arcade versions. And uh, it's, yeah, I, the other cool thing, Mike, with this game is that there is bonus features. There is a museum where you can actually see uh, the last 40 years of SNK's games of what they created. So you can go through all the different games that they created uh, and they show you like a little history of each game. And then there's bonus features, which you can actually page through the uh, guides, the arcade guides to these games. And they're in Japanese, so I can't read them, but it's awesome. Like you can see some of the artwork and then there's also um, concept artwork as well. It's, it's awesome. Uh, Yeah. I, that's and then, cool. oh, one last thing. Sorry, this is so cool. They also have uh, soundtracks too to each game, so oh. you can listen to all the different soundtracks for each game. And some of these soundtracks of the games like featured the first time that any like voice, like vocalization of like actually recorded singing uh, were in some of the games. Like uh, Psycho Soldier is the first time that they had like music and somebody actually singing to the music in a video game in an arcade game. So I will say some of the games probably age better than others. But the reason they added a lot of these games is because they were like the forerunners of uh, something that's never happened before. Um, so, like Cycle Soldier, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so I like it. It's great. Is so now from what I I think because I was reading up on this, do they also include a um, spectator mode? Like you can watch yes. them, yes. somebody, not somebody, but like. They play through the entire game, so you can yep. just watch the entire game being beaten if you wanted? You, you can, and then you can jump in and start playing. At any point? Yep. Oh, man. Oh, man. Do yep. I still have my receipt for Golf Club? <laughs> <laughs> and then, no. Mike, the other thing, they also have save states for every game, so you can oh, save every game. Oh, good. Yeah. And then, uh, and then they also have a read-wide functionality, too. So if you're, like, um, I use this a lot oh. in the Alpha... Uh, what is it? Alpha... Alpha mission, I think it was called, mm-hmm. um, where you're flying, and then I would get killed because it's, it's just it's just you know bullet hell in some of those levels. So then you oh, yeah. just rewind it to a point where I was you know obviously still alive, and then strategized a different tactic. Uh, and and so those are the things that they take you know the classic arcade games and the classic uh, console games, and then add some modern features to them, modern gaming features. So I. You can read our review on our site as well, uh, and that's going to be GamerHeadsPodcast.com. So you can go out there, check that out. Uh, but definitely for forty dollars, like you can't, you can't beat that value. I think that comes to like a dollar seventy-five a game or something like that. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. And and like I said, they could have easily uh, build this as more than fourteen games at launch because of the fact that a lot of the games you can play both the console and the uh, the arcade version. Um, I'm glad they didn't because I think, you know, I don't know. It seems, it seems a little, (laughs) that would have been a little shady. I think you're like, you get like 28 (laughs) games, you know, but you know, but they, I think that's one of the strongest things is the fact that you can play both the arcade and the console version. So, yeah. And I was, uh, so one of the first games I got for my NES was a car. I warriors. 
Oh, and yeah. My brother and I played that all the time. We, in fact, discovered a few uh, a few glitches in the game. Uh-huh. Like, for example, so little a uh, little pro tip for anybody who picks this up and plays Akari Warriors, uh, two players. If you both go to a tank at the same time and press enter, the tank duplicates and you get two tanks. Oh, interesting. I did not know that. And there was another glitch that we found where if player one walks to the top of the screen and player two like gets stuck behind a rock, player two will phase through the rock and become in in like 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 flashing. Uh huh. But their shots will still kill the enemies. <laughs> but enemies' shots won't kill them. Interesting. So they so come become Starman. Completely invincible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the only unfortunate uh, on that. The only unfortunate thing on that is there's a point in the game where that player two cannot um, proceed any for any further. And you're just stuck. So you have to end the game right oh, there because that wow. person can't die. I don't know. That's just, I have a lot of memories of Akari Warriors. I love yeah. Akari Warriors and POW. I love POW yeah, as well. Yeah, POW is really great. And, and I will say, like I played, I played both of those on the console. Uh, playing them on the arcade is just, wow. It Those games aged really well for the arcade version. Awesome. Uh, yeah. And and not only do you get one, uh, Akari Warriors 1, do you get Akari Warriors 1, 2, and 3. There you go. Uh, you got so. the trifecta on that. Yeah. Awesome. So All I'm right. Um, I'd buy it, too, if I could. <laughs> 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 but I spent my money, so. Yeah. Uh, let's move on. So the next game, Trailblazers. Uh, Trailblazers is a fresh new cooperative racing game with an innovative on-track game mechanic. Paint the track, boost on your color, and work as a team to win. Take control of high-speed racers and unique 3v3 team races across a series of colorful circuits. Paint the track as you race, capturing key areas to dynamically change the racing line. Then boost on your team's color to dominate the race. Is this a Crayola Scoot or something? I... Is that? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, it sounds... I mean, but Crayola Scoot's different, obviously. But in that game, yeah. you you color the you color the map your color, and then you get um, boost and uh, yeah, boost for for going over your own color. So that that's why I just joked about that. Uh, hmm. It sounds interesting. It sounds like I don't know, racing meets Splatoon. Splatoon almost. Yeah. yeah, that's that's actually that's that's a very interesting concept. So you, when you hear racing games, you don't really hear much about co op racing games. Yeah, first that's of true. all. Uh, and second of all, like the idea of painting a track and then having your your partner or co op uh, partners are that's behind you, using the colors that you're that you're painting the track with, in order to get themselves ahead. Like there's it looks like there's there's like a lot of like um, you know a lot of strategy between and communication between teams. It sounds interesting. Yeah, it does sound interesting. Uh, and this and is thirty. How much is yep. this one? Thirty. Yep, thirty dollars for Trailblazers. I'm gonna buy it. I'll buy it. You buy it. I'm gonna that save might. my money. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it. Okay. Uh, it, although it does sound interesting, uh, I'm not huge on racing. Like the only racing game I'll probably end up getting from for the rest of my life is Burnout. If they ever oh, make another Burnout. Yeah. Although Forza Forza, Forza Forza does look really nice. Forza is good. Uh, I have the yeah. game pass, so I was able to play that game. So the Forza is oh, good, okay. but. Uh, but this sounds interesting. I enjoy, you know, I enjoy co-op racers, and uh, it sounds like a unique uh, aspect to the game with coloring the track. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll buy it. So that leaves me with, I think, ten dollars. Yep, thirteen. <laughs> if you take 13? over, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, thirteen. Thirteen bucks. All right, and our next game is. Uh, a little game that people might not know about. It's uh, called Fallout 76. Mm, yeah. Uh, Bethesda Game Studios, the award-winning creators of Skyrim and Fallout 4, welcome you to Fallout 76, the online prequel where every surviving human is a real person. Work together, or not, to survive. <laughs> Under the threat of nuclear annihilation, you'll experience the largest, most dynamic world ever created in the legendary Fallout universe. So, uh, in real life, I'm picking this up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm you can't this week. <laughs> but I can't this week because I'm already getting golf club. Yeah, that's uh, right. 
although I am a little concerned about it. Yeah. There, it, there's been some uh, people that have been complaining, uh, not complaining, I don't want to say complaining, but have been saying that there's, you know, well, I mean, obviously it's a Bethesda game, so it's going to be glitchy and buggy, but I don't know. I, I haven't been hearing good things about it. Yeah, I haven't either. And, and I know, Mike, you gave me the uh, beta code uh, to try it out. I, I, I didn't because, well, I was a little concerned because I know that if your your beta game carries over to your actual game and it i does. didn't want to and i didn't want to screw up your game so i did. oh no <laughs> you're all good you're all good uh but i you know i think i think i'm gonna let the dust settle on this one and let uh others go and purchase it first and then if it comes on sale in the future and they fix some of the issues that they're that people are saying that they're facing right now i yeah. may consider it but at this point i just I can't justify dropping $60 on a game that people are kind of lukewarm on right now. Right. And and actually, so um, on Thursday night, there was a special stream um, on Bethesda's Twitch page, and it oh. was uh, Fallout 76 being played by um, Ninja, who's like yeah. the new, like the big, the big name right now, Ninja, uh, Logic, who's, who's a rapper and uh, Rick and Morty. <laughs> I didn't, I don't understand that, but okay. Yeah. Uh. So it was so it was the four of them, uh, playing Fallout, um, Fallout seventy six, and on paper it seemed like a good idea. Uh huh. It, it kind of fell apart. Like mm. it, it was not very exciting. Uh They yeah. It, it's I and I was actually so I was I was um I was watching it with uh with Kurt and Sherry. And we were just like, and I said, like, why didn't they just pre-record this? Yeah. They, that's this, it's just, and I'm watching them this and they're just like, okay, so I'm, I'm looking, uh, I'm, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to check this out. And, and, and like, it was, it was so like, I'm like, why am I not getting millions of hits when I stream? <laughs> My stream is a lot more interesting than this. Well, that's, I guess a good question. So is this game not going to, I mean, it's weird to think this because I, but it's part of our society now, right? A gaming society. But you have to think about how these games are going to stream online. Is this game not stream well? I think I think it will, but I think that the the chemistry between, uh, you know those the you know between those three, mm. I don't know. I it just seems like they're like there there was no planning whatsoever. I see. It's like all right, guys. Hey, nice to meet you. All right, let's talk. Like. I don't know. It's just it was really it was awkward. That that was that's uh, the best. Yeah, the game yeah. itself though didn't look too bad. You know, they came across a, a random person uh, and got into a fight with them. Um, but I don't know. It just man, as much as I was looking forward to it, at one point I was looking forward to it more so than Red Dead. Oh but, really? Oh yeah, absolutely. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's that John Denver song, man. That 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 does it for oh, everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave it. All right. And, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to leave it as well, but in real life, I'm going to buy it. Uh, sure. our last game is Pokemon. Let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee. Mm. Take your Pokemon journey to the Kanto region with your partner, Pikachu or Eevee and become a top Pokemon trainer. As you battle other trainers, use a throwing motion to catch Pokemon in the wild with either one Joy-Con controller or, or the Pokeball Plus accessory, which will light up, vibrate, and make sounds to bring your adventure to life. Share your adventure with family or friends in two-player action on one system using a second Joy-Con or Pokeball Plus, sold separately. You can even connect to the Pokemon Go app using a compatible smartphone to bring over Pokemon originally discovered in the Kanto region. Oh boy. So here's the thing. <laughs> not, I can't buy it this week because I don't have enough money because it's a sixty dollar game. Yes, uh, but uh, I am going to get this game eventually because, man, my daughter is a huge, huge into Pokemon right now, and uh, to, the ability to be able to play together and work as a team. So this looks so cool. Oh, I'm not gonna buy the Pokeballs because I just. I'm not into that gimmicky kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but uh, the game itself, I, 
Yeah, I'm going to have to get this just because I think it's going to be a really fun game to play with my daughter. But like I said, this week, because of the game that we're playing, right? And I only have $30. I can't buy it this week. But uh, I will eventually get this game. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave it in the in our episode, but eventually pick it up. Yeah, so... I'm 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 in the same boat as you. Um so I actually so I've only recently been getting into Pokemon Go. Like over the past few months. So I've never I mean I I downloaded it but I only played it for just a you know just a short amount of time and then I got bored of it. Didn't Sherry play that game a lot? She played it nonstop when it first okay. came out. Like okay. she was like hardcore. Like she actually you know she like met up with people and and she really got into it but then um then she just kind of dropped off after yeah. a while. I should, I should, we should clarify that Kurt and Sherry are, are co-hosts of your, of your, on your show that you have. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just random people. Yeah, just random people. <laughs> uh, so I just started getting into it. Uh, my son and I go on walks because we've got three Pokestops near our house. Oh, nice. So we go on walks. It's you know, and and it's fun. And there's like we're constantly in battles, uh, gym battles with another, with another uh, people that group of people that live in the neighborhood. Yeah. So, um, and then whenever we like catch something or evolve something, we'll text each other, um, the pictures of it. Nice. So I definitely want to pick this up. I actually might pick up two copies. Oh. One for each of us, because oh. uh, he he likes he likes Eevee and I like Pikachu. So. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. You know that you can play though. Um. You, well, you, yeah, you can play on the same Switch together. So. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but I still would like to have my own save, unless they yeah. have, do multiple save. But I don't think Pokemon games have ever had multiple saves, uh, save so. files. Yeah, I don't. Oh, the the blue like blue might have. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. I, I guess as I thought that I did have my own. I thought because I bought that game used, and I thought it had like three save files, but I could be wrong. Okay. Um, and then obviously to be able to transfer your Pokemon from the Pokemon Go app to the yeah. game. That's awesome. As well as, if I'm not mistaken, the Alolan forms of uh, several of the Kanto region Pokemon. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it sounds cool. Uh, it is $60. I, uh, you know, I can't afford it this week, but something that I would uh, consider picking up in the future, maybe as a special buy or something like that. So. Yep. All right. So those are the games. This are the games that are coming out this week. This is like crazy. a crazy week for yes. games. Like so, before like, you know, probably was it probably even like ten to five, five to ten years ago. Even October, November was the huge two months for video games. Yes. Now I know it's kind of gone a little bit uh, into like January. I know January is not is pretty big now, but in terms of releases, man, this week is crazy i actually I while i was talking about it i saw my wallet scuttle off and jump out the door and on a bus <laughs> well no it's crazy right because i mean think about this we had red dead we had spider-man we had um <clears throat> yeah forza horizon 4 uh we had uh you know the pikachu games we had mm-hmm. uh the snk games I mean, and then fallout 76 uh, yeah <clears throat> i mean this is a lot of games in in a very short amount of time, and uh, it's it's just crazy to me to think about how difficult it is to market a game nowadays. You know yeah. what I mean? Like to be able to keep somebody's interest in after that initial buzz must be really really hard in today's society. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's tough. And even if even for for us, like even because we you know because we work um, regular nine to five. And, uh, and it's going to be just, you know, what it is, it's, it's more games to add to the backlog. Yep. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've often, you know, last year I thought was the, the best year of gaming. Uh, every year just seems to prove me wrong. Like, nope, yeah. this is the best year of gaming. <laughs> uh, it's just, I don't yeah. know. It's so crazy. And, you know, and then we got Smash Brothers coming out yet, too. Oh, Jeez. yeah. And God of War came out this year, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Horizon. Yeah. Horizon. Horizon came out actually last year, I think. Was it last it? year? I thought yeah. it was. Oh, that's right, because God of War came out in spring this year. Yeah, Horizon was last year. My bad. But then we had Celeste come out this year. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah, there's a lot of really good games that are contender for a game of the year, for sure. Oh, yeah. 
Um, yeah, it's insane. Yeah. All right. So those are the games this week. So uh, our leftover in, in fake money um, is I've got $33 to bring it to <laughs> next week, which is great, which is better than last last That's week right. That's when right. I had $3. That's right. Uh, and Roger, you've got $43 left. Do I? Oh, yeah. yeah, I do. Oh, look at that. No, I no, I bought Trailblazer, so I have 33. Oh, that's right. You bought Trailblazers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. All right. Sounds good. So that's No, no I don't. Wait. 13. No, 13. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I can't do math. Yeah, we... I have $13. <laughs> math is fun. <laughs> math is fun. $13. <laughs> so I'll be hurting again next week. But <laughs> <laughs> That's okay cuz it's worth it cuz of all the releases this week. That's right. All right, so those are uh, those are the games coming out this week. Uh, of course, there are plenty more games coming out, so be sure to check out um, your local video game system or GameStop um, to see what games are upcoming. Be sure to check out that game's uh, online store, the Coming Soon section. Lots of good stuff. So that is uh, this week's episode of Buy It or Leave It. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, Roger, or, uh, thanks so much for listening. Roger, would you like to uh, tell everyone about Gamerhead's podcast? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, Gamerheads podcast. Um, it is a podcast with Blue and Christian and myself. Uh, we uh, do interviews. We discuss hot topics in the gaming society, and we every episode launches on Sunday evenings. Uh, so catch those. Uh, you can listen to it on Podbean. You can subscribe to us on Podbean. That's at gamerheadspodcast.podbean.com. Uh, you can also go to our uh, newly launched site, uh, which is going to launch, yeah, well, it will launch last weekend. And the site is GamerHeadsPodcast.com, so check that out where you can get new episodes of our show and this show and see read reviews. And, Mike, you can also listen to your show as well. Yes, uh, so... The show I have is uh, the Controller Throwers. So we are the Controller Throwers podcast. It's myself and uh, our friends uh, Kurt, Sherry, and Brian. Uh, we do a lot of the same. We talk video game news, new releases, what we're playing. We also uh, have a weekly retrospective where we talk about a an old game and offer amusing anecdotes and interesting information on it. Uh, our episodes drop every Wednesday at the same uh, at the same spot since we're part of the Gamerheads Network. So it's at gamerheadspodcast.podbean.com or on gamerheadspodcast.com. Uh, we also try to stream as much as possible, and I would like to make an announcement. Tonight, it's been gone for a long time, but I am bringing back Saturday Night Perlers. Yay! Uh, <laughs> where I, uh, we listen to some, uh, some music, and we make uh, pixel art out of uh, these little tiny uh, plastic beads. And then I... <laughs> Iron the beads and try not to burn down the house. Yes, <laughs> that's a fun. It's a fun. It's a chill show. So uh, yes. definitely check that out. So you can find that on twitch.tv slash tc throwers. Yeah, and Mike and I are going to start working at uh, working on a schedule uh, for uh, the Twitch channel where we're going to have more shows that we can offer to you as well. So stay tuned that's for right. that. Sounds good. So yeah, so that's our uh, that's our episode. Thanks everybody for listening. Uh, be sure to check us out next week when we talk about all the games that we'll be releasing into your stores or digitally. Until then, have a wonderful rest of your week. We'll see you all next time. So long. <laughs> <laughs>